welcome back to the channel I know it's been quite a while since I've done a proper video fishing but today's the day this is our first session back on the boat we've got Mark's boat back in the water yesterday and a bit of a funny situation I don't want to waffle too long I want you to get into the video I was up at 3 o'clock this morning I dropped Mark at his boat in Cardigan and now I'm driving quite far up north to meet him um, he's on his way up in the boat right now we're probably actually in line in comparison to the sea and the road um, target today is taupe Mark did this session on his own last year end of May when I was on the skate he had 50 taupe so we want to try and recreate that if we can we don't know if we will we've got the bait we've got the perfect conditions the seas nice and flat it's overcast everything's perfect tides are good everything's in our favor we just hope the taupe are there you can't ever guarantee it obviously but anyway I'm gonna let you get into the video there'll probably be some b-roll as usual like I normally do on the way out some of you may work out where we are some of you may not work out where we are I'll let you put it in the comments anyway I'll let you get into the video stopped in a little bit of a rough patch we're gonna try and catch some fresh bait we don't know the areas around here at all it's a completely new place but we've got a load of frozen bait but we would like a few fresh if we can for the taupe but we'll see Mark snagged up behind me rough patch, are they? what you need to do when you're fishing rough ground like this keep lifting it off occasionally like that just so you can feel your lead tapping bottom a lot of people just leave it and it's snagging up all the time You've got to keep it moving because we're moving, we're like drifting with the wind and the tide. So we're dragging the lead across it all and it's just going to keep pulling into snags. So, like I'm doing now, that's on the bottom. Just lift it off and feel. You see, it hit bottom again there. What we've done, put a little tiny bit of squid on the, on the feathers basically, in the hope for stuff like poor cod, stuff like that. Just mini species in a way, pouting, things like that. So I'm not really feathering as such, like traditional like this, as you do. Just pumping bottom. Maybe. Just tapping bottom across this rough area. But we'll carry on with this. See if we can catch some fresh and we'll get out to the grounds. Well, there was no bait fish. So what I'm gonna do, head up straight up to the grounds where we're going. We'll just use the frozen bait and we'll try and catch a few little bits on the bottom when we're up there. We may pick up whiting and stuff, we're not sure. So yeah, we've had a quick crack at it. It's not happening. Saves wasting time. We're gonna just get up there. Sun's shining, sea's pretty flat, and I'm dying to get a big bait down. Let's get up there. Well, we've been dropped down about 20 minutes or so, and I'm getting a little bite on that rod, so I thought I'd get the camera on just to see. It's literally just started, so I'm letting it develop a little bit. No idea what it is, but we'll see in a bit, see what happens. Tides only just started to turn, so yeah. This setup here, a bit interesting. The rod was about 15 or 18 quid. I brought it from my son. It's not even in pounds, it's in kilos. But the bit that's exciting about this one is the reel. We've got uh, got Miss Mitchell Garcia 602A, it was my granddad's reel that was. So, yeah, he's passed away now, and he always said I want you to catch taupe on this, and we did it. But I thought we'd get it back out and have a go on it. There's something playing with that, I feel it thumping on it. 
And the rod is just cheap as anything. It's rated uh, 28 to 70 grams or 6 to 10 kilos. So yeah, we'll have a little bit of fun with this. See what happens, little cheapy setup. With really cheap Chinese braid on it. But we'll have a play. Don't know if you can hear that, but... Mark's got a taupe on now. I'm gonna grab my other camera. That's what it's all about. Yes, pal. You don't like the light. So, this is the first taupe of the session. We've probably been fishing 30 minutes. Probably making a little bit of a meal of it. Don't matter. Here we go. First sight of it. It may have a second dive. It may. There we go. Look at that. Brilliant. Mail packed Hold up. That. That's going to be a bit of a bugger. It's so gone down, has it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's unusual with circle looks, isn't it? It is. That's gonna, that's not gonna work. We'll have to get that in. Well, a bit of a first for us, to be honest. I've never seen this before, but this taupe seems to have taken down the circle look a little bit, which I've never seen before. I don't know how far down it is. We'll have a look now. But I've definitely never had that happen before. <coughs> Angry probably. How far down is it? Can you tell? Quite, actually. Is it? Yeah. It's unusual, pal. It is. Really it's unusual. Really go. go on. Well, as you can see there, we don't normally like boats, and we like to T-bar them off. I'm gonna guesstimate this is about 30, but yeah. I'm gonna get it back. Don't wanna keep out the water too long. Got it? Go on, surface. Make up. <laughs> Still going. Oh, yeah. He got me. Yeah. Not as bad as he's got me though. Look at the state of his hand. <laughs> Still going. You think we'd know by now, wouldn't you? You think we'd have gloves on, wouldn't you? Nah, you've got a feeling with your better hands. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we catch a few more. Um, I think I messed up the sound. I don't think I put the microphone on in the excitement. Hopefully we'll get more runs and you'll be able to hear the proper ratchet go in the base of the proper runs. That didn't really fight that hard, to be honest. It never had much go in it at all. But, yeah, let's get down for another one. Is that a nice huss? We do catch these here like dogfish. You catch hundreds and hundreds of them. But that is a good it's a big one. So, what I'm trying to do there, look, with my hand, supported stomach. So, the markings on it, big head on it. Yeah, it's a nice size huss. I can't really eat them, quite strong for little things, but we'll get it back. But yeah, there we go, look, sitting still for a minute. Yeah, we'll get this chuck back. I'm gonna bite on this rod. I think it's a huss. Maybe you can see the tip of the rod there. Took the ratchet off. See the rod bouncing? Generally with a huss, it's a very thumpy bite. Like this. I'm gonna try and hit it. We've got circle hooks on, they don't do great with hooks, but we'll give it a go. It's on at the moment, but that doesn't mean anything with hooks. That'll probably just let go at some point. They don't seem to get hooked very well with circle hooks. Circle hooks are more for fish that run.
Right, we'll sit down when we get it up. If you are new to fishing, you can if you want to do, lift and wind, and as the tension's pulled up, lower the rod. You don't want to leave slack at any point. Okay, so we're going to lift the rod. Yeah, 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 we're going to l
Yeah, that last tote we caught was also wrapped up in my other line. I didn't notice, and it's actually snapped it off. So I need to retie you. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Um, obviously, with a tope, for people who are new to it and do not know, they've got rough skin. You have to use, I wouldn't say you have to use, I personally use an 80 pound rubbing leader. So I'll show you how it works. What we've got here is Daiwa J Breed. This is only 29 pound. As you can see, it's very thin. There's not much to it at all. What we're going to do is tie these together, basically. I'll show you the knot now. But what happens? What happens then, this becomes a wind-on leader. So you can just wind it straight up your rod, straight onto your reel, like you do with a breed. Makes life a lot easier having a big clunky swivel and a big lung trace hanging out your boat when you're trying to land fish. So, I'm going to try the best I can to show you this. It's going to be a bit awkward because of the camera angle and where I'm standing. What you want to do is get the lines and lay them together like this. them laid together. You want to loop the braid. Generally, I'll go around six times. And then we'll pull it down. Not tight. And we'll stop there like that. It'll probably be easier to show you with the mono, to be honest, because it's thicker line. So now you can see, we've got a little, like a half-blood knot there. Now we've got the mono here, the 80 pound. Same again, around the braid. So you want to do a loop, like that. So you can see the braid's running against it. Pinch it there and you can see the braid's there, look. You go and loop. We're going to go around that loop three times with the 80 pound mono and around the braid. So you leave it lined up together there and go around three times. One, two, three. You only have to go three times because otherwise you end up with a big massive knot. You don't need it. A bit of wet. You want to pull this knot down carefully because what happens is it pinches the braid inside it. So what you need to do before you pull it tight is start pulling the knots together. Look, like that. Occasionally stop and pull the knot tighter. Watch your teeth. As you can see, it's a, neat, a lot neater knot now. So I'm going to pull it up a bit more, make sure it's not got pinched. You're not going to get it much tighter than that. Yeah, but still not pinched. Just before the touch, right there, I'm going to give the braid a tighten. And now, pull the knots together so they sit on each other, just like that. I don't know how well you can see this. Obviously, we're rocking a bit, bit of a breeze but cut the tag ends off and make sure it's your tag ends and not your main line. I've done that plenty of times. That tag end will go in the bin in a second. Now, without cutting my hands with a braid, you want to test it. That's solid. You can see it's a pretty small, neat knot. That'll fit through the eyes, no problem. So what we'll do, We'll wind this now down the rod. It's a bit like a shock leader with a beach setup. You wind it down, put a few turns on your reel, you've got the length of the rod, and then what we'll do, I'll show you the next bit. Well, as you can see, the knot's here now, coming down. Just going to feed it onto the reel to one side, now that you have to. Just a few turns, nothing crazy. That'll be more than enough. We'll cut the line off there. That's more than long enough. Basically, I'd say, if you have 10 foot, you've got enough. We've got the 80 pound mono there. What we're going to put onto this is a zip slider. So we've got the zip slider there, that's for your lead. And we've got a 6 mil black bead. We'll put that on next. So you can see there you've got your bead and your zip slider. And then we've got the taupe trace that I use. I'll tie this on and then I'll show it you. Just a normal blood knot. It's a simple knot. You go through the swivel. Like that. And you go round that line there six times and pinch there with your fingers, stop it spinning.
And then you've done there, you've got a little hole there to go back through. Put it back through there and pull it down. You wet it with your mouth as well. If you don't wet it, it heats up and it weakens the line. But I just say, this will pull down neat. Pull it slow as well, there's no rush to pull it down. You can wet it again. And that's a really little neat knot there, look. Cut your tag ends off. And as you can see, that's it tied on. The swivel is a power swivel. The braking strain is 295 pound. We've then got roughly, I'd say around four foot of 250 pound mono down to a Koike 10 circle hook. Um, the length of the bite trace entirely depends on the boat you're fishing on. This one's got fairly high gunnels, so really you want a longer bite trace, so you've got something to hold on to, to unhook the fish. I made these when I had my smaller boat, the smaller open boat, so these was perfect for that, because it was just low to the water. If you've got six foot high gunnels, probably have a seven foot trace. Just so you've got something to grab all, all of, and you can T-bar the fish off at the side. And that is literally as simple as it is. You can see it right there. The zip slider, the bead, like that. We'll put a lead onto this now. Your lead just goes onto there. Like that, and you close the gate. And there we go. This is ready to go down. What I'll do, I'll shove a bait on and show you what we're doing with it. What I'm going to do here is show you how I'm baiting up. This is frozen mackerel, caught a load last year. Froze them in bags of 10. Um, when these defrost, they do go a bit soft. So, the way I've been hooking them, get your circle hook, up through the centre of the chin, and out through the head. You, normally you'd leave it like that, potentially, but they are a bit soft. So what I'm doing is pulling the hook through. There's nothing special about this, nothing complicated either. And then, go in the back, and back out. So it looks something like that. What we're going to do now is elasticate it. I wouldn't normally use elastic for stuff like this, but this bait is quite mushy, and it makes it usable when I mean, catching tow pony. You do really want the freshest of the fresh. No matter what it is, as long as it's fresh, put it on. Fresh mackerel, whiting, pout, coalies, anything. Fresh bait's what you want, really. But, as always, this time of year, early on, it can be a struggle to get fresh bait. So this was the reason for having a big backup of frozen mackerel. We've got 80 with us today, because out here can just kick off. Today doesn't seem to be one of those days, unfortunately. But that's just the way it is. And as you can see, it's hooked there. Nice and solid, not gonna come off very easily. We'll get this drop down now. If you want to, you can nick the tail off, let a bit more scent out, but yeah, we'll drop this down whole, just like that. When you lower this down, it's in the water now, the, the, the lead drops faster than the bait, so you end up with it spiraling on the way down, it tangles. So if you watch this, just let it go down slow, occasional pause if you want to. Just like this, there's no rush to get it down there. If you rush it down, you're gonna tangle. And if you tangle, you're probably not gonna catch. So just take your time, just like this. As you can see, with an occasional pause, you want the mackerel sitting out in the tide and it drops down like an L shape. Otherwise, it goes like a V shape and it just spins around itself and gets tangled around the main line. In the heat of the moment when the fish are going mad, you get too excited and you drop it too fast. It all goes wrong. You just gotta try and compose yourself and take your time to the bottom. As you can see, that's on the bottom there now. You can let a little bit more line out, lift the lead off the bottom, send it down tight a bit if you want. You don't have to. I'm gonna engage it there. Loosen the clutch, keeping hold of the rod tight because you could get a run right now. And then test it. That's nice and easy, ready to go. And that's it, it's ready to go. Waiting for a taupe to scream off. We're gonna have a move. The fishing is not that great here at all. We've had the three taupe, we've had a few huss. 
Nothing like we expected. Mark fished here last year in this exact spot and he had 50 on his own. So obviously we had really high hopes, but it's not happened. It's just, it's just the way it goes, bad luck. So we may head inshore. Obviously we've got to head back that way after anyway. So we might go inshore, see if we can pick up a few bigger ones possibly. We'll have a, we'll have a see and try. So yeah, we're gonna have a move and we're gonna see what happens. Obviously it's not gone to plan. It, that happens quite often, to be honest, with boat fishing and sea fishing. It's not easy. It's really not easy. But it's an amazing day, as you can see. We've seen a few dolphins earlier. We have had fish on the boat. You can't ask for more. We could be stuck in work. Yeah, I'd rather be stuck here blanking. So let's get in short. Pressing all the top one, the button at the front there. Pressing all to five seconds. And the other one on the side. There's a button on the bottom of it in the same place. The microphone on the side on the wire. Well, we've had another take. And we've just got a seat there. Can you see it on the camera? Do you want to land that one? Yeah. Try and get you a better view of this one. Out of the sun. The male tongue. See the little teeth inside there, look. And obviously quite a big mouth. The eye. They got little spots, some of them. This is an average size male pack tote. This is what you get. We'll show you why we can see it's a male, but yeah, this is number four today. It's not gone the way we wanted, but I'm not complaining. We've had four taupe. It's early in the season still. And it's there, yeah, I'm happy. If you look here, you can see all the little pits in the top of its head, hopefully it's clear there. When you put your hand by its eye, or on there, his eyes close, it protects his eyes. If we go down here, if you look under here, you can see the two claspers there. But yeah, if I stand back a touch if I can, you'll see it's not a bad size with Mark holding it there. So, yeah, do you want to return it? Yeah. Well, we're going to end it there. We've had, we've landed four tope. We've had a few huss. Today's been not great. I'm not complaining at all. We've still had tope, target species. Obviously we wanted a lot more, but I suppose in life, you always want more. You're never happier, yeah? Um, I'm actually going to head in shore now and try for some bass. We don't know if it's going to happen or not. I'm not adding it to this video. If it does happen, there will be another video coming out. Um, if it doesn't, you don't see a bass video. It never happened. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did enjoy it or you did find it useful, please consider subscribing to the channel and also hit that thumbs up. It's a massive help to the channel and I'd really appreciate it. Right, I'm going to switch you off and I'll see you in the next one. I thought I'd show you the spider crab Mark had. I'm actually going to take this one home. Yeah, I love eating spider crab. It's quite a sweet meat. It's an absolute beast. Look at that. I wouldn't, I don't know, well, I wouldn't like to say how big it is. I've had it in the cool box, so it sort of puts them to sleep rather than just leaving them there. But you can see the size of that claw to my hand. Look. It's an absolute beast, this spider crab is. I think this one would actually struggle to fit into a pot. It's that big. I don't know how wide across that is. Yeah, that spans over, over two foot wide, claw to claw. It's, it's a big one. But yeah, that's gonna be my tea. So, looking forward to that. Now I had one for over a year. It's been a long time.